there. We talked today in class about one-sided limits, and we looked at how we can use one-sided limits to evaluate particular functions analytically. I have selected two problems from your textbook, numbers 11 and 16, and they are similar to the ones that you'll see on your homework assignment tonight. Number 11 says, find the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of the absolute value of x over x. So in solving problems analytically, our first step is always going to be to plug that number in and just see, do I get a number or do I get a number over 0? In which case, I'd have my answer. But in this particular case, when we plug in 0, we get 0 over 0, which means that we need to figure out something more. Can we factor? Can we rationalize? Can we get rid of an, an extra denominator? Can we distribute and simplify in some way? And when I look at this function, it, there's a part of me that wants to simplify, right? x over x looks like it could become 1. The issue we run into is with the presence of these absolute value bars. Because of those absolute value bars, there's actually an interval where it absolute value of x over x does simplify to 1, but there's also an interval where it simplifies to negative 1. And so I went ahead and graphed this function, absolute value of x over x, so we could see what it looks like. And our function will come out like this. As we're approaching 0 from the left, we're approaching 0 from values like x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 2, this side of the graph. Right, and we're coming to x equals 0 from the left. Well, as I come into x equals 0 from the left here, the y value it looks like I'm approaching is y equals negative 1. So as I approach 0 from the left of absolute value of x over x, my answer is negative 1. If I had been approaching 0 from the right, it would have been 1. And if you don't have your graphing calculator, you can verify this by picking values on the left side of 0 and plugging them into the function. It doesn't matter which value you pick, you can pick several if you want to, but um, 1 would suffice. And so if I pick a value to the left of 0, that could be like negative 2. When I plug in negative 2, I get negative 1. And if you still wanted to double check, you could pick another one. Well, negative 7 is even further left of 0 than negative 2. And when we plug in negative 7, we again get negative 1, which was our overall limit. Okay. Number 16 was the next one I picked. Number 16 asks us to find the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, where f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 6 when x is less than 2 and negative x squared plus 4x minus 2 when x is greater than or equal to 2. The reason one-sided limits come into play with this particular problem is because when we try to find the limit as x approaches 2, the, both pieces of our piecewise function approach x equals 2. This top one approaches from values that are less than 2, and this bottom one approaches from values that are greater than 2. This would be different if we were asked to find the limit as x approaches, say, 5. This top function only deals with values less than 2. 5 is not less than 2. So I wouldn't even need to consider this function. This function would be the only one I would need to consider to plug into, factor, that sort of thing if necessary, because 5 is greater than 2. Because they ask us for the limit as x approaches 2, we have to look at both sides. Okay, so we're going to do the limit as x approaches 2, but we can't answer that unless we first answer what is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, and what is the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. If when I look at this function from the left and from the right, if I get the same number, then that's my overall limit. If I don't, if I get, say, 1 and 5, then my graph will have been coming in at two different places, right? And they do not agree at that spot, right? They do not agree at that spot, and so then it would be does not exist, does not agree. Okay, so we have x approaches 2 from the left. I have to determine, well, which of these two pieces is x approaching 2 from the left? Well, left of 2 are values like 
0, and 1. Okay, so those are the values from which I will be coming. 0 and 1 are in this interval here. x is less than 2. And so this top function is the one I'm going to use to find the limit as we approach 2 from the left. Okay, so I'm going to take that 2, plug it into my top function. I get 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 6, which is 4 minus 8 plus 6, which is negative 4 plus 6, which is 2. Okay, for 2 from the right, those values right of 2 are like 5, 4, 3, coming in from the right, 2, 2. So I need to figure out, well, which one of these are coming in from the right? Well, right of 2, that's this interval. x is greater than or equal to 2. And so this bottom function is what I'm going to use for right of 2. So let's plug in 2 into that bottom function. I get negative 4 plus 8 minus 2, which is, sorry, which is 4 minus 2, which is 2. Okay. Because I got 2 for both from the left and from the right, that's my overall limit. Again, if I had gotten 2 and 5, it would have been does not exist because it does not agree. Okay, there's your answer.